Hey everybody, welcome to day three of PSL. So glad that you guys are here. Um, again, I want to just take a minute and sort of recap what we've done so far. Um, so far this week, we've started off just realizing that we can honor God with our bodies when we work out. And so I really hope that that's helped you to change your mindset a little bit when you go for exercising and realize that it can be a time of praise and worship instead of a time of just trying to change the exterior part of our bodies. On day two, um, we talked about having an, a, a lifestyle of gratitude um, instead of it just being a seasonal thing and um, that we can um, just be grateful for the fact that God gives us blessings without expecting anything in return. And that mindset shift helps us have a, um, a more intimate relationship with him and helps us see things from a Christ perspective. Um, today, I'm going to be sharing a story that you guys may or may not be familiar with from the book of Matthew, and we're going to be reading from Matthew 14. Um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the four Gospels of the New Testament, and these reveal what happened during Jesus's life. Um, so today, I'm going to kind of walk you through a story, and for those of you, regardless of where you are from a faith standpoint, I want to focus more on uh, less of the how this happened, because I'm going to be talking about a miracle, or sorry, I'm going to be reading scripture that's talking about a miracle. So I want to suspend the how, and I want us to focus on um, the story in terms of what can we learn from this, okay? So that's sort of how I want you to shift your mind. So we're going to start off with um, uh, chapter 14 of Matthew, uh, verse 24. So what has just happened is Jesus has just performed a miracle where um, he fed he fed 5,000, okay? There was a couple baskets of, of bread and fish. More and more people came to hear Jesus speak, and um, there wasn't enough food to go around, and so Jesus multiplied the food. So Jesus sent the disciples off into the, to the Sea of Galilee, which is a lake. Um, the lake is actually surrounded by several plateaus, um, which makes it a perfect uh, storm, so to speak, so that when the winds would come in the Galilean area, these storms would just be tumultuous, just like crazy storms, okay? So that's just kind of to set the, set the, set the expectation a little bit um, of what the Sea of Galilee is like. So verse 24 says, and I have the NIV version, it says, but the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. And if you go and you look at the story in some of the other gospels, we learn that they had been... Um, out at sea, at sea, in this lake, but a huge lake, um, for nine hours from when they began, and they being the disciples. So Jesus has sent the disciples out, and they were only three or four miles from where they began, and they'd been out at sea for nine hours. So they were uh, already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them. So commentary tells us that the fourth watch of the night was nine hours from when Jesus had sent them out. Now, many of the men that Jesus had asked to be disciples were fishermen. So um, they were not necessarily new to this, right? Um, they, um, they had probably been in these kind of conditions before. Um, and so it was during the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. Now, some of the commentary talks about the fact that these, these waves were just so incredibly violent. And so these disciples who were already fishermen, it's not like if you or I went on on a boat and, you know, we were in a tumultuous storm, that would totally freak us out. Um, but these guys were fishermen. They already knew, but they were terrified. And that leads me to talk a little bit about fear, right? And fear usually begins because we are scared of the unknown, right? It begins to set in. Fear is rooted in our inability to know 
what is next? And so this is an amazing part of the story. And again, I don't want to focus on like, well, how did Jesus walk on water? Like it's a miracle. We're not going to focus on the how. That's a whole different devotion that we could do. This is the, how is this story talking to me? And so Jesus says, I think he's talking to me and I believe he's talking to you here. And he says, take courage. It is I don't be afraid. And I love that because Jesus could have been like, hey, dude, man up. Y'all are fishermen. Don't be scared. Be brave. Get over it. Right. But instead, I think what he is saying to me and what he is saying to you is take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. And regardless of what your faith journey is, the one thing that I have learned from really studying the Bible over the last 10 years is that God's character from the moment of creation until the time that he sends Jesus until now, his character is the same right? He is the same God that he was when he created earth, when he was with Abraham, when he was with Moses, when Jesus was on earth. If you go back and you look and you you take notes of every single story in the Bible, um, I did this once and I, I just took notes of what God's character is like and his character is the same. So his character has been faithful over time. And so we know who he is, whether you're a brand new Christian, whether you're wondering whether you've been a Christian your entire life, um, we can take courage because we know who he is. So at this point, we're going to go back to the story. So Jesus says, take courage. It is I. I love that. Take courage. Um, Peter, one of the 12, gets up out of all these disciples. It is Peter who gets up and he said, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. And so what I love about this is that Peter is really the one who has this like impulse and he is faithful because the rest of the disciples think that it's a ghost, right? And so Jesus was, or Peter was not putting Jesus to the test. Peter was standing up in faith and saying, hey, Lord, if this is you, tell me to come on the water. And so Jesus says, come, come. And so Peter has a decision to make on whether or not he's going to step out into the sea. And guys, it is a storm. Like it is a rough, scary storm. Winds, waves, water slapping everywhere. And so he's got a decision. So Peter makes the decision and he has to make this decision that I think many of us have to make in so many circumstances in our life um, where fear holds us back. And Peter makes the decision. Would he allow his fear in stepping out lead to missing out, right? Would he allow his fear of stepping out derail him from missing out on something past that fear? So Peter gets out of the boat and coming back to scripture, it says here, then Peter, this is, this is verse 29. So Peter gets down out of the boat. He walked on the water. He came toward Jesus. And then verse 30 is so you and me. Okay, here it comes. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. So we don't really know what that meant in the story because it says when he saw the wind. We don't know if that meant that like water was in his face. We don't know if like there was a gust of wind and he looked away. We don't exactly know what that meant. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. And he cries out, Lord, save me. And at this point, he has, in my opinion, three options, right? He can he can sit there and hold his breath while he sinks. He can call out to his friends who are still in the boat, the other 11 disciples, and be like, hey, throw me a lifeline. Or he can go back to who he knows. Take courage. You know me. It is I. Don't be afraid. He can go back, option three, and he can cry out, which is what he does. And he says, Lord, save me. And how many times do we... Maybe step out in faith, and I always say, like, eyes above. Keep your eyes fixed above, eyes fixed above. And how many times does something happen in our life that's scary or distracts us, and we look away, and we start to sink. And at that point, we have a decision to make while we're sinking, right? Hold our breath. Call out to our friends or other people other than Christ or call out to Christ and be like, Lord, save me. And so immediately, immediately, Jesus 
puts his hand out, reaches out his hand, and he catches Peter. You of little faith, he says, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? And when he climbed back into the boat, the wind died down, and those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. And so I just want to leave you with some thoughts to pray about today with this story. It could go on and on, but I've been already doing this devotion for 10 minutes. And it's who you trust is greater than what you fear. If you are trusting in your creator, if you are keeping your eyes fixed above, he, Christ, the one who has had the same character from the beginning of eternity, he is greater than what we fear. And I can tell you from 43 years of living, especially the last 10 years where I've been full on in scripture, is that the most extraordinary things in my life have happened on the other side of fear. More often, the beauty comes when I get out of the boat, right? When we act like Peter and we get out of the boat. And so if you are somebody who, who has acted in faith and you have gotten out of the boat, but you've taken your eyes off of Christ, the wind has distracted you just like this story, just give yourself some grace because you took that first step out of faith, right? So just focus above and pray that God would reinstill your faith and that he would lead you along the same way. And if you're one of those people that's stuck in the boat, then just pray that Christ would give you the courage to step out and that he would show you what he wants to show you so that you are able to have those extraordinary experiences on the other side of fear. So I encourage you to go back and read the story. Um, but remember, anytime you start to feel that feeling of fear come, and a lot of times when I start to get fearful, I will say, I'm so excited, I'm so excited, I'm so excited. And the reason I do that is because fear and excitement are actually the same emotion. And sometimes we have to trick our brain. So I might be like, oh, I'm so excited, I'm so excited, I'm so excited. And it helps me, it helps my brain detach from what it thinks it's afraid of. And then I can pray. I'm so excited, I'm so excited. It calms me down. Lord, Help me to have the courage that you want us to have. And Jesus was talking to Peter, but he was also talking to us. Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. So I hope that this helps you guys. I ask that you would just spend some time in prayer asking for more courage, asking that Christ would lead you on the other side of what you are afraid of, um, and that Christ would instill your faithfulness and that we can be like Peter and get out of the boat. Okay, guys, I will see you tomorrow.